give me the call. Okay. Hello. Welcome to the laboratory in uh, hematology at the University of Malaysia Sabah, Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences. Today, we are going to show or demonstrate as to how the blood of an individual can be typed into the ABO system and the RX system. So today, we are going to be assisted by assisted by our Enchik FND and he is the one who is going to help us uh, to demonstrate today's session. Okay, so first of all we are going to be labeling the slides as has been shown over here. They are labeled as A B and D, okay? And now we are going to be adding the anti sera on each of that. Anti A into the onto the labeled area A. We put a, just a draw of the anti sera, then that is blue in color. Anti B is yellow in color and we apply that and anti D which is colorless is applied on to the place where we have labeled it as D. Okay. Now we take the sample of blood and we apply it on to these anti seras anti A, anti B, and anti D, and mix it up with the help of these sticks which have been placed, uh, and allow the antigen antibody reaction to take place. We take the sample of blood and then we apply it onto the drop of over there. We need to place the drop of blood next to the material. You can use the sticks to mix it up. And there should be no cross contamination at this particular stage. Once we have mixed it up, we keep the stick over there and then we can dispose it up. Then we mix with the anti B, then we mix it, we go on to the last part which is the anti D. We mix with this and once the proper mixing is done, we discard the stick. Now we need to allow it for 5 to 10 minutes for the agglutination reaction to take place. The membrane of a human red blood cells, that is the red blood cells, the RBCs, contains a large number of antigens known as agglutinogens. Uh, there are over 600 different red cell antigens uh, which can be, uh, which are determined genetically. They are called as the Mendelian inheritance. Well defined blood groups or groups based on the presence of agglutinogens are as follows. Uh, the major blood groups, these are present in all individuals and they include the ABO system and the RH system. Uh, there are minor blood groups also and there are blood groups which occur in certain populations only and these 
uh, are called as the minor groups and they are not present in all the populations. The few examples are the P system, Kel, Duffy, Kid, Bombay and etc. The ABO system uh, who started this was Carl Landsteiner in 1900 described the ABO system. Four distinct blood groups are recognized in this system. They are designated as groups O, A, B and AB. This is determined by the presence or absence of A and B agglutinogens on the red cells. The genes which control the ABO antigens are located on the long arm of the chromosome 9. There is a law called as the Landsteiner's law. According to Landsteiner's law, if an agglutinogen is present on the red cells of blood, the corresponding agglutinin must be absent from the plasma. And if the agglutinogen is absent, the corresponding agglutinin must be present. This law holds good for the ABO system because it is only in the case of ABO blood groups that absence of A agglutinogen is associated with the presence of anti-A agglutinin and the absence of B agglutinogen with the presence of anti-B agglutinin. But in the RH system, only the first part of the law holds good. Did we find any reactions? Can we check it out? Let's take a look at the reaction. As you can see, if you do a close-up, you will find that there is no reaction in the A as well as the B. So this person's blood belongs to the group O. Whereas you will find, lift it up, lift, no light reaction. There is going to be a reaction which is very clear. Over here as you can see, there are particles and this is a reaction because it is positive to D. So anti-sera D it is reacting so therefore it is RH positive. So this is how the recording is done. And so therefore this person's blood belongs to the O positive type of group. Uh, this is another demonstration of how from a fresh sample of blood we can do the blood grouping. Uh, you apply the aseptic precautions applied to the finger that is by using a alcohol swab. Once that is done allow it to dry and allow the circulation to increase by waving the fingers and then with a sterile lancet boldly prick the fingertip and then see this. See the drop of blood? Now this drop of blood is important so we mix the drop of blood into the saline suspension. This is how the saline cell suspension is going. So this is called as the blood saline cell, cell suspension. Once that is done, all you have to do is next is to take the filler, take a sample of the blood with the saline cell, cell, cell suspension and apply one drop over here, one drop over here and one drop over here. 
that's it. And now we need to see the mixing gun. This is how the cell suspension is to be mixed up. Then this one also has to be mixed up. So we allow some time for the agglutination process to take place and then we view for observing the agglutination. But the final conformation should always be done under the microscope in order to avoid pseudo agglutination presence. So you can mix it up and see there is a reaction but requires a little more time. sample was not It is there, yeah. but it's very fine. You see there? Yeah. And see there also? There. And here also it is there. But the enough number of cells are not there. All right. We need to do this again during the lab session. See that? Beautiful reaction. Yeah. Is it possible to get this? Clear, no? Yeah. Okay. So this is how the blood group is going to be determined. This is A, B positive. This shows the reaction in all of them. See that? There. Blue, red, and this one. All the three are there. So that is how the blood group is done. Thank you very much. Hope you appreciate this session on the blood groups. So we have shown the different types, uh, how we can do with the uh, fibrotic vein blood sample as well as using the fingertip uh, to demonstrate the ABO system and the RH system. Thank you.